In today's circuit fun video, we're going to take a look at an interesting op-amp sine wave oscillator. Not one that you read about very often. The oscillator we're going to look at is called a twin T oscillator, and it was suggested by one of my viewers. Now, in doing my research on this oscillator and this circuit, because you don't hear about it very often, I came across this really good application note or article from Texas Instruments uh, dating back to, I oh, guess, what is it, 2000, by Ron Mancini. And he talks about the design of op-amp oscillators, in particular low-frequency oscillators that only use resistors and capacitors. Now, especially for low-frequency oscillators, just using R's and C's is preferable to using inductors, because for low frequencies, the inductors can get pretty big and bulky, where R's and C's can be kind of small and compact. So the goal here was to design and play with an op-amp oscillator that produces a low distortion sine wave and only using R's and C's. Now I'm not going to go into the theory. This, uh, design, this article actually does a really good job in talking about the theory of oscillators and what it takes to make them work. and actually goes through several examples of different types of oscillators, ranging from things like Wienbridge oscillators to phase shift oscillators and a couple of other uh, interesting ones, including uh, one called a Bubba oscillator <laughs> as a, an aquadrature oscillator. So I'll give you a link uh, down uh, below the video in the video description here to where you can go download this article yourself. A really good read, and if you want to learn a bit about the theory, that's a good place to go. Now again, the Twin T oscillator is kind of interesting, again, because it uses only R's and C's, no inductors, and is relatively easy to get a pretty good low distortion sinusoidal output. So it's not easily tunable. That's one of its downsides. Uh, but if you need just a fixed frequency low distortion sinusoidal oscillator, it's a nice way to go. And then some minor trimming might be needed to get the lowest distortion. Now other RC oscillators uh, that are op-amp based are a relaxation oscillator here. This one uh, does not produce a sinusoidal output. It'll produce a square wave output and a triangle wave if you take the output from here, but it's not sinusoidal, but it's super simple and pretty stable. And I've used this before when I've needed a simple square wave oscillator. Now for sinusoidal RC op-amp oscillator circuits, uh, the RC phase shift oscillator is pretty common and just uses a series of RC uh, delay networks to create a phase shift to satisfy the Barkhausen criteria for oscillation and you need to trim its gain to get a good sinusoidal output. And uh, this is covered pretty well in the article. Another very popular one is the Wienbridge oscillator. It is sinusoidal but it generally needs some, again, special gain control to keep it from distorting. And uh, oftentimes you see this done with an incandescent lamp that provides essentially a nonlinear load. So as the amplitude goes up, the lamp resistance changes and alters the gain. And by choosing the resistor and the lamp correctly, you can get low distortion. But to me, it's just kind of unusual to use a lamp in the feedback circuit. But again, it's documented pretty well in that article, and I invite you to go play with it. Another variation in, that's described in the article is to actually use an automatic gain control circuit around this using a, an FET in the place of the lamp and have that controlled by a separate feedback loop to adjust the gain. And it all works and works pretty well, but it's also a whole lot more complex than what I'm going to show you next. Now the Twin T oscillator is based on something called a Twin T network. The Twin T network consists of essentially two circuits in parallel. Uh, both of which are T-style filters. So this first one, you think of an RCR filter, and this essentially is a low-pass network, right? High frequencies are going to be shunted to ground, low frequencies will pass through, so it essentially has a low-pass characteristic, you know, kind of similar to this in terms of response versus frequency. If we put in parallel with that, uh, the corollary to that, essentially two capacitors in series and a resistor to ground, that forms a high-pass network. Okay, so its frequency response would look something like this. So if we take this guy and add it in parallel to that guy, we wind up with the twin T network. So with the twin T network, if we arrange the resistors and capacitors so they have this relationship, where if we get whatever value of R we use here, we use the same value here, and we use half that value down here, and then whichever value we pick for the capacitor, we use double that value here. If we put those things in parallel, uh, these circuits will resonate at the same frequency. And what you wind up with is a combination of those two responses and it creates a really nice notch filter. 
And if you ever need to notch out a particular frequency like 60 hertz or 120 hertz in an, a low noise preamp design or something like that, this is actually a pretty good filter to use because this notch can be, you know, 40 or 50 dB deep and do a really nice job of nulling out um, a unwanted frequency. And of course the frequency at the notch is 1 over 2 pi RC. Let's actually take a look at the response of this twin T notch filter on the scope using a Bode plot. So I built the 20T network here on my proto board using some 10K resistors and 10 nanofarad capacitors. Uh, you can see here this is the uh, two series R's and these two capacitors in parallel. You know, double their values for the 2C uh, leg going down. Then this is the uh, two capacitors in series. And rather than taking two 10K resistors in parallel to half the resistance for the leg going to ground, I used a 4.7K resistor and a 500 ohm trim pot. And the reason I did that is when we configure this for an oscillator, uh, we may need to tweak this value a little bit to get the lowest possible distortion, so I just built it up that way. I'm going to measure the frequency response using something called a Bode plot, and that uh, is using the signal source in the scope to generate a signal that is being measured on one channel of the scope and being applied to the input of the network. The output of the network is being probed by the other channel, and the routine is going to essentially measure the input versus the output and plot both the magnitude and phase of the response of that filter, and uh, we should see a nice notch response. Now I've configured the measurement to look from 100 hertz to 20 kilohertz using 50 points per decade. Now since this is going to take a while, we'll speed the process up uh, so you don't have to watch it. It actually takes uh, several minutes to run because it's making 50 points for every decade change uh, in the frequency that it's measuring. So we'll just let this run. Like I said, it takes a couple of minutes, so we'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, that measurement is done. Let's just zoom in on the results there a little bit and maybe reconfigure these plots to get a little bit better view of what's going on. So we take a look at this, uh, the green line is the gain or the response through the network. We can see at low frequencies it's basically 0 dB, it basically just passes the signal through. And up again at uh, 20 kilohertz, it's uh, doing about the same thing. But right here in the middle, well not quite in the middle because it's a logarithmic scale, we can see a notch that's uh, well under well, 40, close to 50 dB down. Uh, so that's, that uh, is at that 1 over 2 pi RC. In this case, that's uh, just under 1.6 kilohertz. The red trace is the phase, and uh, where we see this kind of phase reversal, uh, in there is where we're going to get our 180 degree phase shift, which will be necessary to sustain oscillation. So this is exactly what we expect to see from the Twin T notch filter. Now let's stick this in the op amp circuit and turn it into an oscillator. Now by sticking this Twin T network in the feedback path of an oscillator, uh, when this thing goes effectively to a high impedance at the notch frequency, that actually winds up causing an increase in gain of the op amp. So what that really means is that at very low frequencies and at very high frequencies, this is a very low impedance, so we're going to get a lot of negative feedback, and the op amp is not going to do anything. But uh, once we reach that notch frequency of this notch filter, uh, that causes the gain in the feedback loop to be much, much higher and essentially will amplify its own noise and things like that, but that's only going to happen at one frequency, so that's why we get an oscillation. Uh, I'm using a rail to rail op amp here. It's a microchip MCP6002, um, but just about any rail to rail op amp will work, and even others that are not rail to rail will work. I'm using just a simple resistive divider to bias up the non inverting input. In your case, uh, in some cases, depending on the op amp, you might need to add a little bit more positive feedback with a, a resistor, you know, around the from the non-inverting input to the output. But I've found I haven't had I didn't have to do that in my case. And here's where I made that uh, trimmable trimmable element. So rather than just putting two 10k resistors in series to get my 5k here, I elected to drop that resistor down a little bit and put a trimmer in there. And whenever I do this, when I want to trim up gain or something like that, I tend to try to take the ideal element value that I want to use and reduce it by about 5%. And then take a trimmer that's about 10% of that value to stick in series with it. 
So that gives me essentially a plus or minus 5% adjustable range around the target value. So that's why I picked those values there. Now with this uh, adjusted properly, it's very easy to get sinusoidal total harmonic distortion well under 1%. Let's go take a look at that. So now here's the oscillator in operation. We can see just visually it looks like a really nice, clean, uh, low noise, low distortion sinusoid. And if I take uh, and adjust my trimmer here a little bit, you can kind of see that we reach a point where the oscillation goes away. And if I bring it back the other way, the oscillation will come back up. And we can see if we adjust it too far up, we can see we start to clip at the top and the bottom. That's going to create uh, harmonic distortion. And we can adjust the value to that is till that is just minimized. And we can see that we're a little too far and the oscillation goes away. And we come back to just where it gets up there and just starts clipping a little bit. And that'll be the point where we have the lowest possible distortion. So we've got two different ways of looking at that level of distortion. First, let's just add an FFT on the scope to look at the harmonic content. Right, so with the FFT added, I adjusted the frequency scale to go from DC to 20 kilohertz. And we can see the vertical scale here is essentially 20 dB per division. So um, but if we take a look at uh, our peak signal here is up near that uh, gradical right there. So there's 20, 40, there's 60 dB down. And here's the harmonic pieces, the, first, the, you know, the second, third, fourth, fifth harmonic, etc. We look at those and they are more than 60 dB down. So that's actually quite good. If you go back and look at uh, some of my previous videos on total harmonic distortion, you'll see that this will lead to a very nice, clean response. I had to collect a little more data in time to get this resolution on the FFT, but we can see those results quite clearly. Now we can also take a look at total harmonic distortion with this Keithley 2015 THD multimeter. So let me go in here and probe the output. And we can see from here that the total harmonic distortion is 0.12 and change percent. So well, well under 1% total harmonic distortion. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little circuit fun video uh, talking a little bit about op amp sine wave oscillators, but in particular about the twin T oscillator, which you don't see written up very often and make some pretty nice clean sine waves with an op amp. So go build one yourself, go play with it, and let me know in the comments how well you do. I'll give you links to my notes as well as a link to the TI article uh, that I referenced here in the video in the show notes down below. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time. Oscillator.